Hi everyone, Allie Hermanutz here, Chief Steward of QP 3903's Bargaining Unit 1. Unit 1 represents full-time graduate students employed as TAs at York University. If you're watching this and are a part-time student, you may be in Unit 2, but more on that later. Either way, I'm here today to introduce you to the services and strengths of your labor union, QB 3903. But before we talk about specifics of our union, we need to talk about systemic racism, black liberation, and the labor movement. We in the 3903 Executive Committee stand in solidarity with all people who are regularly policed, surveilled, and subjected to blatant and more insidious forms of racism and state violence in their workplaces and communities. While QB 3903 already has a number of internal bodies and structures that speak to and address these issues, such as the Employment Equity Committee, the Advisory Committee on Race and Ethnic Relations, Discrimination and or Harassment, and the Anti-Racism Working Group, much of this effort is directed towards defending our members in order to hold our employer accountable. We realize that hollow sentiments and defunct working groups seldom change the material realities of people of color who experience racism. As such, the Executive Committee and rank-and-file members are working together on concrete initiatives within and beyond the local. We hosted a town hall on anti-racism on August 11th and are organizing our 2020 contract bargaining parameters around an anti-racist intersectional framework, recognizing the systemic discrimination that our members face in receiving contracts to teach at York. On top of this, the COVID-19 pandemic has obviously brought precarity, anxiety, and disillusionment to many members of the York community and beyond. But we're here to tell you that we still have an entire contract full of rights that York University must follow so long as you are employed by them. As of May 21st, we have a letter of understanding, or LOU, on COVID-19 related issues with York. This LOU has provided much needed financial support to many of our members. This agreement was the first of its kind in the sector and was the outcome of intense negotiations with York. In brief, York committed $140,000 to support members facing financial hardships, with up to $50,000 in reimbursement of expenses. You are eligible to apply for the Remote Course Delivery Fund once you have a signed Fall 2020 contract. York has capped this union fund to cover only up to $300 of hardware, software, or services needed for you to work remotely, but if you would like, the Union's Ways and Means Fund can consider additional expenses over $300. You can apply on our website, 3903.qp.ca, by searching for a remote course delivery fund. The Ways and Means Fund I just mentioned is one of our collective agreement funds that helps members facing financial hardship, and was another sector-leading benefit when we negotiated it many bargaining rounds ago. Our union, through the involvement of rank-and-file members like you, has negotiated sector-leading collective agreements with York that provide us with rights, protections, and benefits related to our work. But our collective agreements expire on August 31st, 2020, and we are again preparing for bargaining new collective agreements. We coordinate our bargaining across Units 1, 2, and 3, that is, teaching assistants in Unit 1, contract faculty, and some part-time graduate students teaching as TAs in Unit 2, and graduate assistants in Unit 3. Our bargaining sessions are always open to the membership. It is always open, transparent, and driven by membership concerns and desires. You will have the opportunity to share your ideas, concerns, and be involved in determining the direction of the local throughout the bargaining process, especially at general membership meetings. Our collective agreements grant our members access to a wide variety of benefits, funds, and leaves as well. All of these entitlements were, again, achieved through past rounds of collective bargaining. Members and their dependents are eligible for vision care, dental care, prescription drug coverage, and paramedical care through our insurer, Sun Life. Dependents get their own set of benefits and do not share the benefits with the member. New members, though, must enroll for benefits, which can be done online now. If you have not already signed up for Passport York, you'll first need to set this up in order to obtain your username and password to access this online enrollment form. The benefits enrollment form must be submitted before the end of September to ensure retroactive coverage to September 1st. Otherwise, coverage begins when the form is submitted. This is explained on our website, again, 3903.qb.ca. Also, excluding vision care, your benefits reset every calendar year. This means that you can use up to your max coverage amount between now and December. Don't hesitate to use all of them because they're part of your overall compensation package for being a teaching assistant at York. 
Additional expenses for members, but not dependents, may be covered by the extended health benefits, otherwise known as the EHB. The EHB is one of our many collective agreement funds, like the Ways and Means Fund mentioned earlier. There's also a Sexual Assault Survivor Support Fund, a Trans Fund, a Professional Development Fund, and some others you're eligible for. You can find information about all of these funds on our website. Over the years, we've won protection against tuition increases as well. As a result, Unit 1 and Unit 3 members receive graduate financial assistance for each term in which you are registered and paying tuition. As of the fall 2020, international students receive $1,158 per term in their PhD years 1 and 2, and $1,382 per term in years 3 through 6. Meanwhile, domestic students in PhD years 1 and 2 receive $694 per term and $869 per term in years 3 through 6. Another provision that was won by the union is the guarantee of a minimum level of funding for Unit 1 members. This includes a provision that allows you to choose whether you receive this funding once a term or over the summer, depending on the needs of your budget. On top of all of this, members of Unit 1 are eligible to enter the priority pool, which guarantees your funding and the right to hold a TA position for six years, compared to a sector average of four. The right of first refusal allows you to teach the same course for a max of four years if you wish. Your department will circulate a TA blanket application, which allows you to indicate your preferences and are due by January 31st each year. Don't forget you must fill out a TA blank blanket application every single year. And remember, as a TA or GA, you are protected by the Unit 1 or Unit 2 collective agreement against overwork. TAs and GAs are not required to work more than an average of 10 hours per week or 135 total hours per term. At the start of the term, your course director should fill out a workload form with you. The form should describe what duties you're expected to perform and how your hours will be spent. If you have any work-related problems, we have a detailed and effective grievance process, and the union has resources to support its members in addressing their concerns. Contact me, your chief steward of Unit 1, if you need more information about your rights. You can find my email address, qp3903cse1 at gmail.com, on the website under the Executive Committee tab. All of this is to say QB3903 is a member-driven local and depends on the participation and dedication of its membership, which means you. Included in this short overview of your rights, protections, funding, and our current situation are a variety of important forms. These resources include an important links pamphlet, a fact sheet on funding, and a TA workload form. You may already have seen these forms in your orientation, but now you have your very own copy of them if you didn't receive one there. Additionally, the university is required to provide the union with a list of new members, but that's a slow process. And it's important that we get contact information from new members directly from you. To that end, we ask that you please fill out this member information form when you have a chance. A link will be provided on the Moodle page. One way to get involved and stay up to date on union affairs is to attend general membership meetings. GMM dates, times, and Zoom links can be found on our webpage. Members can also like our Facebook group, QP3903, join our QP forums via the forums tab on the website, and follow us on Twitter at QP3903Coms. I'm remiss that we cannot do this orientation in person and meet each other properly, but please know that we are all in this together as one big union. Remember that if you have any issues related to your work at York, that you do not have to face them alone. Please reach out to the executive community, including me or our staff, with any specific questions about our contracts or concerns about your rights being violated, if you think that's happening. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Talk soon, and solidarity forever.